Hi there, I hope you're all keeping well and keeping busy. So welcome back to my subscribers and hello and welcome to any new subscribers. Welcome aboard, you're more than welcome. Um, my name's Tanya and I'm from Tatty Treasures. All my links are down below in the description of where to find me, how to contact me, uh, my Amazon affiliates, storefront links down there and <clears throat> that'll show you all the products and things that that i use um and ways to support my channel and anything else that you need to know should be down there anything else just just give me a shout in in the comments so we are going to start today and make this altered file folder um i've made it from <clears throat> a uk a4 size so the measurements that I will be using is for the A4 um, so if you're using something different then you're just gonna have to change your measurements accordingly so we'll have a quick look in it I'm not doing a full flip through I haven't quite finished it and I will do another video uh, doing a full flip through so as you can see we've got the tim holtz lovely paper on the front i've just put a book play on on the front and we've got this little dangle here it's just tied with some brown string it's like a chocolate uh brown string we open it up let me just move my tea like so so that's what we open it up to that goes like so then we've got this middle part and I've got this in the middle. That's what I need to finish off and uh, put something behind there. And that. And then we've got this part and we've got this pocket, gusseted pocket in the back and a pocket on the, the the back back <laughs> the back of the back so that is um the folio um yeah i'm really happy with that it's um i feel like it's a little bit different um for me the papers and things that that i've used the colors and things but yeah i've really in, enjoyed it i've had to it took me quite a while to actually make it um there's been a lot of stopping and starting i would probably just do a section one day and then come back to it another day so yeah i've probably been doing it a week or or so <laughs> but hopefully um you know now i've kind of got the bear the bare bones for it it won't um it won't take so so long so this is all you'll need um f you know for the base so like i say this is the a4 um file folder this one hasn't got a, a tab on it for some reason which is fine i can always add a tab if i want one um so it doesn't even have to be a file folder you know it's basically a big piece of paper folded up i would probably say that this is about 180 200 at a push uh gsm so it, it's not the thickest of cards um you could even do it with two book pages and and just join it at the bottom um yeah or a big piece of card or a file folder <laughs> so i've got this big envelope which is luckily that it is the exact um same height so that goes in there and then this is an A4 piece of craft paper. This is 200 GSM. That goes into the middle. And then we've got this envelope. Um, I was lucky that Violet's made me this from an actual uh, die cut. But any envelope, window, no window, or a frame, just something that you can have as a flip out, as, as some added interest and yeah that's it that that is the basic um you know bare bones to it so 
let's have a look at the papers that I've chosen. So for the front and the back, I'm going to use um, these from Tim Holtz. Obviously, you can do yours in, in anything. Um, don't have to be Tim Holtz. So I'm probably going to use that side for the front and more this side uh, for the back. So that's those. And then I've got a paper pad called the Heirloom. It's, it's an old one. Um, it's not old to me obviously but um, and it's from die cuts with a view the heirloom stack and it's got 180 sheets I have done a full flip through of this when I did uh, purchase it and it's it's made it's backing papers and it goes really well with Tim Holtz um, and I would imagine that it would go with steampunk and botanicals. There's lots of greens, browns, burgundies. Um, it, it's a really good good pad for backing. And the good thing about it is it's paper. It's it's not card. Um, I've did a folio before just using the Tim Holtz paper, and um, I thought it. It, it was too thick and and heavy it wasn't but I do think it'll be better with with paper so the papers that I've chosen are these two lovely browns I don't know if you can see the um, print in it. it it's as if it's a wallpaper um, and it, it's got a bit of a tinge of, of, of red to it just slightly so I've got two of those I've got a music paper got two of these patterned papers which I really love those and a green so I thought they went went quite well together so I'm going to have to cut all those into size now I've got my paper trim out of the side I will just slightly go over but um yeah obviously you're not going to be able to see see exactly what I'm doing but all I'm going to be doing is is cutting the papers down so I have measured uh, the front and the height of the file folder and mine is nine inches by nearly seven like six and oh, just over six and three quarters um, wide so I'm gonna actually cut in centimeters because it's it's easier on the on the board so this comes to nearly 23 centimeters so I'm gonna cut it at 21 and a half just so I've got a little bit of, of, of space all the way around and widthways it comes to about 17 and a half so I'm going to cut it just a sliver a sliver under 17 so that's what I'm going to do first um, because these are more than six and a half I'm only going to get one mat from from each paper um, so there will be lots left over but um, it will still be a decent size it will probably make some good size um, envelopes so I'm going to do the widths first which I said was 17 didn't I so I'm just going to go just below the line for 17. So let's just double check that before I start cutting, cutting them all. So yeah, that's perfect. So <clears throat> they're the ones that I'm going to be using. I'll put the other ones just down there so I don't get get confused some of these i will have to cut down um for the part that's inside the folder um they will have to be cut down a bit smaller but i'm starting off with all the same size so when i'm doing 
each of the inside bits I can see which is the best the best one for it and then um, it just makes it easier because I want to then put this cutter cutter away so I've got some some room let's do those I'm going to try, oh, well, obviously I should be able to do two at a time. It's funny, when I'm doing, like, something important, I seem to cut it one at a time. Whereas if you're just doing plain, plain paper, um, I'll start talking now, I forgot what I'm doing. Yeah, if you're just doing plain paper, you know, you, you end up doing loads at one time. But, um... Yeah, I think once you've got your measurement, if they're all the same size, once you've got your measurement right the first time, um, like really, you should be fine just to just to do them in in one go. Right, I'm not going down there. So yeah, I do think I'm going to make some envelopes with them. So this one I'm going to put in that way because um, I want the majority of of the flower in. So I'm going to have a look what it looks like at 17 and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take 17 came to about there so I'm just going to take a little slither off so it's more um, central so I'll just take that first bit off and put it back in like so. Let's get to 17 again. See if that's any better. Yeah, that's, that's better. So that's that piece. And the back, I'm going to use that piece. So that, that will be the back. So we've got all the um, widths sorted. And then we want the... Oh, no, we haven't. We've got one here. No, we haven't. Right. I don't know where that one came from. I'm sure. I'm sure I've done them all. Right. 17... And that's that one. Right, so let's... Let's have a look at the at the height. I think I said twenty two. Anybody know what I've done with my piece of paper? Yeah, I've thrown it in the bin. <laughs> twenty two and a half. So twenty two and a half. So that's just under nine. So let's have a look at that for height. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So I'm going to be brave and cut cut the rest. Because there's no particular pattern on. It doesn't matter which way or anything like that. So 22, make sure they're all straight. Twenty-two and a half. Just gonna put that on top, just to double double check before before I cut. Yeah. Okay. Moment of truth. Yeah, that's fine. So these will probably make good good tag bases. So that's that. Um so let's have a look what that would take us to. So twenty two and a half. 
yeah that's fine for the for the back because there's going to be a pocket across there so be able to see that nice uh butterfly so that's that one and this one um i'm going to take a bit off the bottom oh i don't know that's i might not have to let's just have a look 22 and a half No, that's fine. So that's that one. So that's all as pieces cut. I'm gonna put that down and put it under under my desk. So I've got all as pieces ready. Um, I'm just gonna look what I've got left. So. I might make the back pocket with that. Well, I could have it on its side. That one looks weird, that side, whereas that side it doesn't. So, yeah, I'm going to keep that for, for the pocket at the back. So I'm just going to get my little trimmer out and if you can see all I'm doing is measuring this up and you can see I've left a gap there and I'm going to do the same here so it can be a gusseted pocket. So that's ready for our pocket later on. Right let's have a look what we do next. Put my scoreboard out. These things are so big, aren't they? Just not got, <laughs> just not got room. Right, <clears throat> I don't even think it's it's straight. Oh gosh, <laughs> move my leaves out the way. So what I'm going to do is where I folded it in the middle, I'm just going to go to the next mark. Like so, and the next mark the opposite side to help if it stayed in stayed in the right line let's turn it over and do it do it again so just going across the same Let's see, same line. I think I keep coming off that. What's that? Yeah. I think this nib on here. It was a bit too wide. It's probably for the wrong board, I've noticed. If you use the wrong one for, for the wrong board, um, the nib doesn't, doesn't seem to um, stay in properly. Let's try this one. This should write on, on the handle, really, which, which one it's for. So I've made a, a bit of a mess of that. Not, not that you're going to see it, but <clears throat> so that should be fine. And I'm going to do the same again with my A4 piece of paper. So just score it <clears throat> one before the half and one after. So 
send that over and do, do it again. Okay, okay, and that's all. Oh, and I did, I got the envelope as well, and I just scored that at the just at the next one. That's it. And let's see if I can. So I'm just going to pinch it and try and get that, that fold. that down Fiddly that <clears throat> the starting it, starting it off, getting it, getting it. That's it. Once you've got it, it's it's okay. Just burnish that down. Just give us, well, it would if I'd perish the bottom bit down. Let's just give us a little, little spine. So that should be like three quarters. That can't be three quarters. What is it? I'll get my roller out in a minute. Right, let's do the same with this one. <clears throat> it's with three eighths, won't it? This is probably the best <clears throat> taking opening it up, but then it, it would be massive, so maybe. Maybe it wouldn't have been so good. So that's that one. Pinching it along. I think that's done it. And let's burnish that down. That was quite tough, that was. <clears throat> I can't remember the first one being as tough as that. And then we've got his, his little spine there, so then <clears throat> that will fit right in in there. 
like so. So I'm just going to put the scoreboard away. Okay, before I put the trimmer away, um, these two pieces that are left from doing the front and, and the back cover, I'm going to cut down to about eight. I'm going to have to use my ruler because um, I've only now got the little cutter out. And this is going to be a notebook that goes in the back pocket. So uh, it can be any size you want it to be as long as it you know fits in in the back pocket but I'm going to do it eight and then I can put the cutter away and you'll see where I'd cut the other one a bit differently to get the right pattern I've got this lip here so what I'm actually going to do is score down there so I'm just going to get my pencil, like so, and I'm just going to score down that line. Turn it over and do, do the other side slightly. Okay. I'm just going to bend that over. And just burnish that down. So then, she'll stick that. Down there. And that will be our notebook. So that's all that. Put that away. So we've got our folder. Just going to take these things out for a minute. So on the right hand side, where you've got your fold, I'm going to cut down there so this flap is open now this is um, I got this idea from Fiona at Miss Paint a lot so I'm just gonna go down down the spine uh, down the fold just to the first So then this part now will flap open, like so, okay. Now I think another time I am going to experiment with having this as an extra, an extra bit. You can see these file folders aren't um, the most, um, straightest of, of things they don't seem to meet so I'm just straightening that up a little bit like so but yeah you can see see their lock I think on the other one I did um I did trim it all around just to make sure that it was um was correct but I'm going to just trim that down. So. Right, so we've got our flappy bit and this will become our back pocket. So next I am going to put the string um, through and I'm going to use some brown twine and I'm going to do it I need it as big as the folder and then I'm going to need some for tying so I'm, I'm going to go three times as big as the folder just you know to make sure that there's enough and then I can always cut off um, after so I'm going to open the folder up 
flat that bit down and this is going to go across the middle so I found my half of the string and I'm going to just put that there a second <laughs> and I'm going to use this um, framers tape um, just to stick it down because I will be sewing around this um, if you're not sewing you can just glue it down which I'll show you when when the folders um, straight around the middle so I'll just put that down like I say this the stitching will catch it anyway and if you glue in um, obviously that will keep it in place Let me just pull this back and trim this bit like putting the string <laughs> so that's that now why I've got um, the folder open I'm going to go all down the spine um, with the masking tape and <coughs> it's not masking tape it's flamers tape and that will just um, give a bit of stability so I just want to that slits there so I just want to try and get it just where that slit starts so if you've not got um, framers tape um, you could do it do it with any kind of tape or you could just glue some strips of strips of paper in or if, if you're not doing that, I've often then on the inside put put lace um, up there. If it was doing an Edith Oldham one, perhaps wouldn't bother doing that. I would probably just put the lace um, through it. And then again, that would give you a bit more stability uh, and strength. So I'm just going to use my bone folder just to... Make sure it's all nicely down. Sorry if I seem a bit preoccupied. It's it's weird having <coughs> Eleanor here through through the day. Um, you're just very conscious that somebody else is in the house, and like at any time they might shout you wanting you. So I think I just feel a little bit like I'm on um, hot bricks type thing. But yeah, I feel quite. Um, preoccupied not like she like she doesn't need me she's cleverer than me um but like you just don't know do you so yeah I'm just waiting for mum and obviously the dog box even more um when Eleanor's home because he feels like he's got to protect even more so um so yeah so that is has given us a little bit more strength and we've got our string in. So I've also done it with putting eyelets at the front. Um, but with this one, I quite fancied um, having the string. I think it goes, goes nice with that. So now we've got the boring job of inking. Whoa. So I am going to use the walnut stain because I, I just think it, it goes on better. You can see it better. Now <clears throat> I'm going to pause why I do it, but I'm going to show you what I, well, you'll see anyway when I've done it. But um, I'm going to do all around each edge, down the spine, down these edges all round through the middle through the bottom the same with the envelope 
the same with that and <clears throat> the same with that so yeah i'll be about half an hour <laughs> so yeah i'll see you see you in a little tick okay so i've inked all around there so a few little jobs um to do next is this is some vellum from the tim holtz vellum so <clears throat> if you're using a window envelope you might already have um, something in your envelope if you're using like a junk mail envelope or you can print on vellum with your printer if you have got some vellum or you can just put a piece of um, paper in or you can leave it open and just have your, your card inside so I've cut that to size this was one of the um, little ones at the back I think I don't know if they're six no they're four by I've cut a bit off so they're the four by threes at the back um, so I'm going to glue that into there I'm going to use the art glitter and uh, all I'm going to do is put some glue all around the edge like so yeah and then i'm just gonna try and open it up as much as i can to get this in and try to get to get glue everywhere which i which i have done <laughs> but it doesn't matter i'm gonna say as long as as long as it's in you can just leave it open to to dry Probably just needs a little bit more glue in there. Let's try and get my nozzle in. But I don't want to squeeze too much in the it or squash squash out. So that's that little job done. So that's ready for some stamping and things on it. So I'll put that to one side. Um I'm not going to do anything with this until it's sewn in. So that doesn't need anything. Um, this envelope needs slitting down uh, the side. And oh, I'm going to do it with scissors because I do think it's too tall for my little cutter. So I'm just going to try and just cut a slither off just to... Just to open it up. Oh, that, that's it now. I fell off the line and I can't get back on it. Uh, oh, it's so much easier doing it with your trimmer. Hopefully, that's got it. Just got a little bit. down down that bit and I think that was all that needed um doing now I did think why I was inking it up I think I'm going to glue this one together I'm still going to sew all of the mats but um yeah I think if I glue it together then you'll be able to uh, see what I'm doing now if I'd have been doing it with the machine at this point I would have opened the whole thing up and this flap thing I would have sewn all the way around I bet you can't see I don't think I can get it to go any wider sewn all the way around with it being open um, and then I would have put it down and I still would have glued it. I would have then glued that bit and kept this bit open. 
so all I'm going to do to start with is glue this side down because nothing's happening with this side um, we need to put this envelope in there and then apart from that we're having nothing you know coming out the top or anything um, so this part can be glued down uh, for now so I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put I'm going to put the art glitter glue on this and I'm going to glue from the score line that we made and I have forgotten something but it doesn't matter I can do it I can do it now I'm going to actually put some tape um, down there as well just to give it a bit more strand because that's going to be opening and closing um, and you know it's only it, it's decent um, craft envelope it's not thin in any means it's probably about 160 GSM it is a really good um, envelope but I think just to be safe um, just going to go and I'm going to put this <clears throat> on the on the actual line of the envelope. So that can go there. I will have to probably put some more some more glue on, but that's fine. I'm going to say I'd, I'm glad I remembered it now than than not remembering. So I'll just cut around there like so and here like so give it a good rub down that glue's never enough vanished already try and kind of remember where the score line is Right, that'll be fine because obviously all the sides are going to be uh, glued down as well. So I'm going to put it that way so I can see the score lines. And I'm going to just lay it down <coughs> and hopefully match the edge of the file folder to this first score line. And let's just check that before it totally glues and yeah that's fine I think I've gone a bit too high uh -huh. I think when I did it off camera this is the way that I lined it lined it up it's funny how you do things differently when you're on camera because obviously you're aware that you you need to show what you're doing and it can be totally different to, to how you would actually do it. So that's all lined up. That's fine. So I've got that little bit of a, a spine. So that's all, all fine. So I am going to glue all this down to... Let's have a look. I would say to the end of the tape I'm going to use the Kalal glue and this comes out pretty fast I do need to decanter it into something something else so I'm just going to go all around the edges first so I've definitely got all the edges Smells kind of funny, this colour. <clears throat> I'm going to say, I've only just started um, using it. And like I say, I do need to decanter some, but um, I've got just a little bit of another glue right at the bottom of, of the bottle, um, what I decanter into, and I, I just need to get that used and then get it washed out. So I've got round the edges. 
and I'll just give it some squiggles and I'm going to stop um, pressing on the bottle now and I'm just going to use the tip of the glue um, to actually just move some of the glue round a bit, a bit more, spread it out evenly. I think still a little bit's coming out but that's fine. So just open that up. Like so. And I'm gonna get my brayer and just give it a good roll over and that will spread the glue around nicely. I don't think any's come out which is good. Let's check that this is still okay. That's okay. What I will probably do here is, I'll do it now, I'll just put some art glitter glue just down here So, so yeah I'm happy with that that's fine so that will go like that and then that will go like that make sure this spine's still okay I'm just making sure that the spine's still okay just folding it back in so yeah that's that's that part so before I ink and sew around the actual um, matte bits what I'm gonna do is make sure that they definitely fit before I sew them so that one is fine so that's this front as I'm guessing the back will be fine because I should imagine it's exactly the same size, but you never know, do you? Saying that, it does actually need a slither off. Isn't that funny? <laughs> so I'm just going to take um, a slither off this side. Oh, it does fit. I didn't think it would fit. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's better. So that's that one. <clears throat> then as we open it up, I want to decide what papers <clears throat> we want where. So I'm just going to use this as, as like a, a reference of, of how when it's layered that, um, that it looks. So you do see that one and that one together and that one. So... I might do that there. I like that together. Yeah, I like that. And then the inside, I did that with the same as that one. So that's there. And then I have two left, which is for the inside of, of this. 
so you can see is you've got it all open you can see those three and then open it up and I think I'll have the green in it like so and then if I have a pocket going down I will have it with that okay right <laughs> let's think about this so these ones are going to want cutting because obviously now the envelope is smaller so I'm just going to line that up with that get my pencil and that one's cutting around there and the length is still fine so those two can go together and they can be cut there so actually I'm trying to mark it on this side so when I am cutting I'm just going to pinch that that's it right so those two want cutting I'll just keep those together so that's the back that's going to be um, some kind of pocket so I'm going to take that to about there that's fine so that can go in the fine pile that's obviously fine so that can go in there and then we need the size of this so about there and about there so that's that. That looked really complicated, didn't it? But <laughs> I assure you, it's not. Um, and I think cutting them all the same size first obviously gave me a good, a good base to to go from. And this will want uh, sewing, so that can go on the um, sewing pile. And this is going to be the the notepad. So I am just going to round those two corners so that can go in the set, well, inking and sewing pile. That one's cutting. So that's those. Nothing wants happening to the envelope or that. That can go over there. And we did say that this was going to be the pocket, didn't we, for the outside so let me bring that back in and mark that because I would like to to sew around the pocket so we'll mark that just get the, get the scoreboard out And score that. Yeah. Sorry about the, the glare. So score down there and down there. I'll turn it round and score down there. So let me just fold this down and see if that's going to be right for, for the pocket. Yeah, I'd say that, that was perfect. I don't know if I want it that colour. I think I did say I was going to do it the other way around. Let's, let's have a look what that print looks like. Yeah, I prefer it that way. Okay, 
Now, in here, I know that I'm going to want a, a thumb hole. So I'm going to put that in now. I don't know how I'm going to sew. I'm not very good at sewing around thumb holes, but... So that's that, and that's that. Let's move this out of the way. Let's get the trimmer out. So that one's going across like so. Just do it a little bit more. That's it. And down here, so this is the back of the of the thing that goes through the middle. So that's that one. And these two are the same, aren't they? Oh no, no, that's that's going to be the long um, side tuck, which is going to be, I use the smaller one I think, I do need to um, back that on some uh, card because it is only paper so I'm just going to put a thumb hole-ish around there, so that's that one, that's left over and these two want cutting down around there so that's that when it's not and it's just a bit too long it always um chomps it there but um, once it's inked up you won't be able to see see that so again I'm gonna well I'm gonna try the pieces that that I've just cut so that is for the back of that one yep that's fine so that can now go on sewing pile and then these was for the envelope wasn't they I don't know which way it went wrong so that could still do with a little bit more off and same as that so it was a good job that i did check let's do it on the chomped side and hopefully um does anybody know what i've just done with my trimmer Okay, I'm just going to trim a little bit off this. Let's see. Let's cut that off before it goes funny. That's that. So that would go there. Yeah, that's a lot better. So they are fine. Let me just cut that off. So I will end the video here. In, in the meantime, I am going to ink around all of these panels. So all of these I shall ink around. That's the pocket. That's the things. That's, that's the notepad and that I'm going to back that onto some card and ink all around them and then I'm going to sew around everything so when we come back we will oh and I'm also going to sew this in down that spine and what I'm going to do is lay it flat and sew it right down the middle and then it will I can use that first crease to bend to fold it on so if you see here now we've got this little gap here 
which when I put the tab on it, it makes it look like a little file folder. And I will go down that in a zigzag if, in fact I'm not, I shall come back and I shall glue it. Um, yeah, I'll glue it because that makes no, no difference. So yeah, but the last one I did a zigzag stitch uh, down it and then laid it flat like that. So I will pop off and get all those um, inked and things like that <coughs> and then I'll chop it back. So see you tomorrow for part two. Bye for now.